By this point, you've probably heard at some time or another that sugar is bad or something about how eating sugar can cause diabetes. You've probably even heard of people around you being diagnosed with diabetes and then having to watch their diets and maybe even taking insulin. But what does it all mean and what is really happening? Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. I am so glad you are here to learn more about your health and how your body works. If you want to continue to learn more about your health, please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your support. Disclaimer, the doctor in my name comes from the PhD I earned. I am not a medical doctor. My videos and content are for educational and informational purposes only. This is not to be used in lieu of medical advice, but to educate you. If you have a true medical emergency or issue, please see your physician. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the pancreas, the mysterious glandular organ that is an accessory organ to digestion. We will also look at why blood sugar levels are important and how they are regulated. The pancreas is a glandular organ that sits right behind the stomach. It is an accessory organ to digestion. What this means is that during digestion, food does not pass through this organ, but this organ makes things that help with digestion. If we take a look into the pancreas, we will notice that the pancreas is a big gland. It actually has two different types of glandular functions with it. The exocrine function, which means that this product gets made and secreted into a duct, and an endocrine function, and this means that the product is made and this product gets directly secreted into the bloodstream. Think hormones. The majority of the pancreas, 95%, consists of this exocrine tissue whose function is to produce pancreatic enzymes for digestion. These exocrine glands produce enzymes that include trypsin and chymotrypsin, which digest proteins, amylase for the digestion of carbohydrates, and lipase to break down fat. This pancreatic juice is filled with digestive enzymes and culminates in the main pancreatic duct. And then during digestion, this pancreatic juice gets secreted into the common bile duct, which leads into the first portion of the small intestine called the duodenum. Side note, most of digestion occurs within the small intestine. So these enzymes are essential to the process of digestion. So this is the exocrine function of the pancreas where these enzymes are getting made and being secreted into the small intestine to aid in digestion. But 5% of the pancreas has an endocrine function, a very important function that actually has to do with blood sugar regulation. These areas within the pancreas that consist of endocrine cells are called islets of Langerhans or pancreatic islets. Two of the main pancreatic hormones that we will focus on today are insulin and glucagon. These two hormones are very important in maintaining blood sugar levels in the body. This is one of the many homeostatic mechanisms that the body has in place to maintain homeostasis. What is homeostasis? Homeostasis is maintaining balance. Since we encounter our outside environment, our inside environment changes. Big changes inside our body aren't good. We eat, our sugar levels go up. We are hungry, our sugar levels go down. Our body can't handle that flux. It isn't good for our cells, especially our brains. Think about when you are hungry. You just cannot function. So we have this system to help maintain these blood sugar levels within the body. See my video on homeostasis for a longer, more in-depth explanation on what homeostasis is and how it works within the body. So how does our body maintain blood sugar so that we don't have incredible fluxes of these blood sugar levels? The pancreas does this by releasing two hormones which do different things. These hormones are insulin and glucagon, as I just mentioned before. You've probably heard of insulin due to its role in diabetes, 
but maybe you've never heard of glucagon. So what do these two hormones do? Let's talk about each one and their roles. See, glucose is needed by the body. Every cell in your body, besides mature red blood cells, needs glucose in order to do their job. Glucose, together with oxygen that we inhale, is converted by the cells of our body into adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP is the energy currency of the cell and is needed for the cell to have energy to do whatever job it is that that cell needs to do. Some cells, like muscle cells, require much more ATP since contractions take quite a bit of ATP. Therefore, these cells also require more glucose. Your brain also requires more glucose. But either way, all cells of the body need glucose in order to function. So where does glucose come from? Glucose comes from the foods we eat. In simple terms, glucose is a simple sugar, a monosaccharide, the smallest building block of a carbohydrate. So glucose can come from the sugars and carbohydrates that we eat. Our body breaks down the food into its simplest form. This is what digestion is for. And these simplest forms for carbohydrates, or called monosaccharides, can be absorbed through the small intestine and then into our blood. So it is natural that after we eat a meal, our blood sugar levels increase through this process. But how does glucose get to where it needs to go? This is where insulin comes in. When we eat a meal, our blood sugar levels go up and our pancreas releases insulin in response to this. Insulin is a glucose transporter. This means insulin takes the glucose where it needs to go and helps it to get into our cells. When insulin is present, our blood sugar levels decrease. This is because insulin takes the glucose out of the blood and to the cells so that it can go into the cells, decreasing blood sugar levels. Now, when insulin is present, our blood sugar levels do decrease, but not to zero. Excess glucose that is eaten, that the body cannot use at that time, is taken to the liver and stored as glycogen. So the liver has these glucose storages called glycogen, where it stores glycogen. If insulin is not present, then the glucose cannot get to where it needs to go and it stays in the blood. This keeps blood sugar levels high and also glucose isn't going where it needs to go. This is why insulin is so important because it helps keep blood sugar levels stable. Once stable, insulin is no longer released until it is needed again. But that is only one side of the story. Our blood sugar levels over time, from when we have eaten, continue to decrease slightly until they drop below normal. At this point, we are feeling hungry or hangry. This is where glucagon comes in. When our blood sugar levels are low, glucagon is released from the pancreas. Glucagon goes to the liver to release glycogen. Remember, the liver stored that glycogen um, from the excess glucose. Now, when glucagon is released by the pancreas, glycogen can then be released from the liver. Glycogen is then broken down into glucose and released into the blood. This increases blood sugar levels. When blood sugar levels are stable, then glucagon stops being released from the pancreas. This process happens throughout every day without you even realizing it. This allows blood sugar levels to remain stable even when we are interacting with our outside environment. For example, we're eating or not eating, etc. our body is still able to maintain blood sugar levels. But sometimes the system doesn't work exactly as it should, and that is when things such as diabetes can come into play. Check out my next video, The Pancreas, Insulin, and Diabetes Part 2, where I'll delve into the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes and how insulin plays a role. I hope that this video helped you to better understand the role of the pancreas in regulating blood sugar. Please stay tuned for part 2 uh, coming soon 
to learn more about diabetes type 1 and type 2. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them down in the comment box below. As always, if you like this video and enjoy my content, please make sure to click the subscribe button to my channel and then hit the notification bell so that you never miss out on a new video. Thank you.